Is there anything greater than a big container of dramatic sunflowers? And wow, these are no exception. I love the highlights and the darks of this. I'm going to show you in this video the color palette that I use. I used oils, but I'm going to give you some suggestions if you want to use acrylics. I had the best time putting this painting in, figuring out how to do that blue pottery jar, getting in great highlights, great darks, what to do with the tabletop, all sorts of decisions that were made. If you'd like to see how I did this painting step by step, I hope you'll come along and join me. colors that I'm using in this painting are Windsor Yellow, Cad Yellow Medium, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Cad Red Light, Burnt Umber, and later I used Ultramarine Blue, Sap Green, and of course Titanium White. I'm painting on a 24 by 24 inch stretched cotton canvas. I love the ones from Dick Blick. They, they're nice and tall and good quality. If you're going to do yours in acrylic paints, I highly recommend you add a slow dry medium. One of the beautiful things about this painting was that seamless transition of colors within the petals. And I think that slow dry medium will help you a lot. If you're familiar with my paintings, you've probably seen me intentionally really bump up the color and exaggerate in my paintings. But for these sunflowers, I wanted to keep them more natural looking, so I really toned it down. And that's why I was using the burnt sienna, the yellow ochre, those kind of colors to um, soften. There will be a place for the lighter yellows and then the lighter yellows mixed with white where the petals are just really catching the light and on the tips. But I have found the more value range that you can have in a painting, the more dramatic, the more interesting it is, the more you really get the sense that there are lights and shadows. So I'm intentionally <laughs> curbing my natural instinct to go bright and I'm, I'm kind of dulling things down using some of my darker colors and saving those lightest lights to the tips. The uh, light is coming from the left side of the painting and you're gonna see me put in some, uh, continue to put in some really dark petals and some really lights. I'm using a reference photo that I actually purchased from iStock. I usually use free reference photos or I take my own, but this particular one just really caught my eye. I love sunflowers anyway, and, and I love things with strong highlights and shadows, and this one just seemed to fit the bill, everything I was looking for. One of the things that I find very helpful when I'm trying to paint something that has, you know, one basic color, but it's got four, five, six different values in it, like this yellow, is to pre-mix my colors. And so I'll work out different piles using the burnt sienna, the um, yellow ochre, adding a little more of the cad yellow in, and I'll come up with a number of different values that way. And then it's just a matter of looking at the photograph, where are the darkest values? I go to my darkest pile, plug that in, and, and keep working through the photograph that way. It's sort of like a jigsaw puzzle, just putting those right colors and shapes in where I see them. And it's just kind of like, voila, the painting just sort of comes together. One of the things that's making these petals so dramatic is I've got some super lights next to some super dark. So I don't have everything with necessarily with a middle value in between, but you'll see something very light right next to something very dark. And I was just following the, the reference photo, but that was one thing that really um, gave a lot of drama to these petals. Here I've started incorporating some of the cad red light and the burnt sienna, not only in the ring around the flowers, but at the base of the individual petals. I've added in the, some sap green. I've muddied it with some of the burnt sienna in the outer ring and lighter with just yellow and green in the center. 
and deform that nice peak here. It's a shot kind of from the back. I'm, I'm doing the same thing with my green leaves as I did with my yellows. I've mixed several values. I'm just dropping the darks in where I see them and then the lights and voila, it just, a leaf appears. It looks like it's folded. If you'll just follow the, the shape and the value and the color, it'll, it'll work. <laughs> it just does every time. Here I've started the flower on the far right side, which is in most shadow. So I'm getting much darker with the petals and a little bolder with the cad red and the burnt sienna. Here you can see from a distance how it's coming together, the light to the dark. One of the things that I did do to make this more colorful in the photograph is the the pottery container in the photograph was kind of a dark brown and it just disappeared in the background. It was pretty dull looking. So I decided to use ultramarine blue and I wanted it to look like it had been thrown on the wheel and there were actual ridges in it from being um, thrown. So I took that ultramarine blue, mixed a little white in it, took some to wide uh, rough brushes that were in rough shape and I just pulled them one big stroke and then another big stroke and it, remember I'm painting this in oil so it was very easy to blend that in to the dark side and I just kind of went back and forth just a little bit I didn't want to go back over it too much because I wanted to keep those ridges in it but I thought it turned out really well I'd never painted anything quite like that before. It was very simple and easy. I'm going to have to remember that and try that again. So here's a final look at how the flowers are looking. And I felt like I needed to go ahead and start putting in the background to see really where everything stood, if I needed to do anything else with the flowers. So I decided to start with raw sienna, which is a transparent color. And in the Liquitex acrylics, you can also get this in transparent. But I love how that left a glow coming through the canvas. Now in the corners at the top, I started adding in burnt umber to get it darker. So of course I lost that transparency there, but gosh, around the painting where that I used that burnt sienna, the glow was just really beautiful. It really felt like natural light filtering through. In the bottom of the photograph, there was folded fabric that was a check material, and I did my very best trying to get that painted in. I spent quite a bit of time on it. I just didn't like it. There was also a leaf there at the bottom. It just wasn't working well, and I thought it was very distracting. I thought the sunflowers looked so fabulous, and then you had this kind of jarring thing at the bottom that was really pulling your eye. So I've gotten pretty fearless. If I'm painting in acrylic and don't like something, I just paint over it. And if it's in oil, if I can, I wipe it out and just start over. And that's what I did there, an executive decision, and it was the right one. Before I show you what I do with the table, I wanted to show you where I tweak these sunflowers. I took pure burnt umber and a little brush, and I started putting little dots around the base of that um, circle where the petals meet. And on the the sunflower on the farthest right, I went in and, and put in some significant light edges and darkened the areas that were in dark even more, just pushing it one more time. And I think it was the, the last step that really made a difference in the way these flowers turned out. So instead of having fabric at the bottom of the painting, I decided just to add in some simple little branches and leaves and some little fruits that remind me of persimmons. And I did two branches and I kind of scattered that fruit, went in and added leaves and highlights. And then I decided to extend the table so that it looks like it's going back at an angle. And I took a soft brush and I just pushed the paint on the edge of that to give a little bit softer look. Before I started painting those branches in, I had sent a good friend of mine a photograph of where I was with this painting because she loves flowers, sunflowers, and has bought several of my paintings before. And she just loved this painting and wanted to buy it, but she did not like the fruit at the bottom of the painting. So I ended up painting those out. 
and I ended up painting what I call debris, some little sunflower petals there at the bottom of the painting. And it was just the right touch. You know, you can't have everything be the star of the show. And this way, the sunflowers were the main attraction and what was happening at the bottom of the painting was just the supporting cast. And I think it was exactly what was needed for this. Sometimes we can try to have too much drama on every square inch of our canvas and it can be just too much. But I was super pleased how this turned out. So pleased that a dear friend has purchased it. And I hope this has been a good learning experience for you as well. I'd love your comments in the comment section below. Hope you'll check out my website. I have a free video there that you can download to um, learn about how I use my favorite colors that are almost always on my palette and you can also see paintings that I have for sale. Thanks so much for watching. God bless.